Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. We are here at East Lawrence Primary, where we're celebrating Black History Month here for the month of February. And we've got the principal herself, the lovely Miss <laughs> Janelle Butler, of course, my chief assistant here. This I know. And we like to match when we, we get love together. We to match. Mm -hmm. And you know, Miss Butler, first of all, I just want to thank you for how your school uh, has incorporated Black History Month through all the elements of literacy and learning and how these kids and you're incorporating them to their standard. Mm -hmm. Talk about that for us, okay? Well, and some of our standards um, in our social studies curriculum are actually specific to certain individuals that we encourage our students to learn about. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, our literacy standards lean so well to this. And our focus here at East Lawrence is actually relationships and literacy. So it's perfect mm -hmm. to combine those two because we have most relationships between our cultures that are children have here mm -hmm. and allowing them to learn and really understand the different pieces there. And I love that and I remember coming here last year and just how you celebrate uh, the culture of your young people and for them just looking around this library, this media center and for some of the kids seeing faces mm -hmm. on books that look like them. That is so, that is absolutely one of the most important things is representation. Yeah. Kids need to see themselves in all of those roles so they know that they can do it because all of our kids can. They all can. And you know, it's always so exciting to come into this building. And I see a lot of the artwork down the hallway. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot of things displayed here. We do. And our children have been working hard over this month. And they have been displaying all their talents and all the wonderful things that they have been learning out throughout all their different classes here. And their camp classes, which are their elective classes, combine well with their literacy and their social studies and other standards. So we it's love, been wonderful. We love, love, love that. And so what we're going to do here today is you're going to talk to some of the, the educators here and let them share stories about maybe how they've grown up, some things that they want to share about their, their African American heritage, the things that they're being taught in the classroom, and what that means to them personally. So we are excited to get started today. I am very excited. And you have some of my wonderful staff members talk to you, and some of our fabulous children are going to share some things with you today, second, too. Second graders. Second graders. You will be surprised at how much they know. They will teach you some things. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Butler. Thank you. We've got the lovely Miss April Fields with us, the media specialist. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing very well. You know, it's nice to see the queen here of her throne, <laughs> this castle here of, you know, where books and learning and literacy, like you eat, sleep, and, you know, dream that. And Pretty so much. here it is, you know, you've got a wonderful display behind us, and you've got so many different uh, books displayed about African-American history, people that have been very influential, mm -hmm. which is a part of our American history. Share with us about how important it is for you as a media specialist to uh, express and to also be able to celebrate African-American history, black history. This is one of my, like, things I'm really passionate about because I just truly believe that kids, all kids need to see themselves represented in yeah. books. Um, and as a white person, I wasn't always really aware of that mm -hmm. until I spoke mm -hmm. to some of my friends who kind of told me, like, nope, they, you know, they grew up not seeing themselves yeah. in books. And so we had the chance to spend some grant money. And so we were able to buy about 500 new books for the library that are all ab featuring people of color in a variety of different roles. I love that. You know, and you and I had uh, an in-depth conversation about you working on your specialist degree. Yes. And you posed a question to me. Do you remember that question you posed there's to me? No, there's no telling. <laughs> what you asked of me is, growing up, do I remember or did I read any books that had characters on there mm -hmm. that I could identify with that look like me. Mm -hmm. And you know, I it took me a minute to just think about it because I'm very keen as far as like my memory of things and things that I've been uh, involved in. Mm -hmm. and, and so I thought about that and I thought about that and I'm like, wow, I don't. Yeah. I don't remember characters that mm -hmm. look like me in books. Yeah. And you know, that's sad to say. It is. I mean, I'm, I'm 50 years old, but as a kid growing up, I don't remember books like that. And so mm -hmm. when I come into your library and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so cool. And I go back to being that second grader mm -hmm. who loved to read and loved to explore. And now I think that when these kids are able to see books of people that they can identify with, if not just understanding all of their story, but to visibly see them, yeah. that's outstanding. Yeah, I, it's just really important that obviously for you know children of color to be able to see themselves represented but also for other children to mm -hmm, see mm -hmm. it normalized you know right this isn't something that should just be like a special section in the library you know just for 
bring out during right. Black History Black Month. Hi this, right. this needs to be every day. Our kids should be able to access books that speak to them. And, and you all do that. You yes. have that readily available for people. Mm -hmm. And of course, seeing books with kids uh, on the cover with disabilities. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of those too. And so what that's doing for our young people is it's definitely broadening, broadening mm -hmm. their horizon and, it is. and their outlook on life and, and their curiosity mm -hmm. as young people. Yeah, they've, um, they've really enjoyed them. There's one of these, I love my hair. Ah. We've got several books about hair and we've had even like little white girls that are kind of pointing out the different uh, hairstyles right, and things. Right. So it's, it's just opening a new world to a lot of them, I feel like. I came down last year or mm -hmm. year before that, and I read I Love My Hair, yeah. and I don't know how I wore my hair, but you all <laughs> know I like to do different things to my hair, and that's like the crown mm -hmm. of your crown and your glory, and so when I first read the book, I was like, oh my God, and to read it to kids as an adult and being able to be expressive mm -hmm. and seeing the reactions from kids in the classrooms of different races, mm -hmm. and I just thought it was just outstanding. Yeah. It's good to be a kid, isn't it? It is. It's, it's, it's good to be a kid now. <laughs> and so what do you want to say to the people out there about the importance of, of learning about African American history and that that's a part of our, our fabric of our life, of mm -hmm. American history, and how we can learn so much through reading? It's just really important that we expose our children to a variety of cultures because that's the world we live in today. We're not segregated anymore, thank goodness. Yeah. Yeah. But you can learn to appreciate those differences. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. You and I are different, but we're uh, yet still the same. Yes. And so I just thank you so much for how you are doing whatever you all need to do to tr really incorporate that into everyday reading, and especially for uh, Black History Month. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. This is Miss April Fields, the media specialist here at East Lawrence Primary. Badcock Home Furniture and More is your home store where you'll find great savings on new living room sets, sofas, love seats, recliners, and more. Badcock Home Furniture and More has great savings every day on bedding and bedroom sets. Shop Badcock Home Furniture and More for a great selection of dining room sets and save every day on electronics and appliances at Badcock Home Furniture and More, 1927 Highway 441 South in Dublin. Call 275-3144 for more information or stop by and see Wendy and Tim Sumner or any of their friendly staff today at Badcock and More Home Furniture Store, where no credit is ever refused. Tax Time America has been bringing customers all their credits for more than 16 years. Tax Time America has provided our community with friendly, professional tax preparation and is always up to date on IRS rules and regulations and on the Affordable Care Act. Depend on Tax Time America, an authorized e-file provider, registered tax preparer, and a member of the Associated Tax Professionals. Tax Time America brings experience and ethical practices to you with no money out of pocket. Get your $2,500 tax advance. Call Tax Time America now at 274-8181. Tax Time America Income Tax Service located at 103 High Street in the Northside Shopping Center just off North Jefferson. Bringing customers all their credits for more than 16 years. Tax Time America located next to Cricket Wireless on North Jefferson in Dublin. Call Tax Time America now 274-8181. Tax Time America would like to honor and remember a devoted friend and mentor, Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Smith, October 12, 1962 to August 14, 2019. You know, this has really just been a good day to be able to just chat a little bit about Black History Month and, and how it's being incorporated into the schools and learning. And we've got Miss Samantha Scott with us this morning. Hi, Samantha. Hello. Nice to see you. Thank you, too. You know, Samantha, share with us a little bit about yourself growing up and and if you remember celebrating black history or do you remember in school seeing people that look like you on books and, and you as a mom, of course, and how you try to encourage your kids to learn and grow? Well, of course, when I was young, I can also remember black history being incorporated. When I was in school, we had books, we had posters. Um, I can remember teachers giving us pictures to color, mm -hmm. and after we cut her, she also gave us little quotes or positive facts about them. Mm -hmm. um, with my kids, I as well, I can remember that I have a 12-year-old, and I can remember 
Um, a couple years ago, we had to do two projects. We had to do a poster of a, um, a black history figure. We also had to do an essay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so for you as a woman, here it is, you're a, you're a long-term sub, right, yes, in the schools. I mean, great to see you in the schools. <laughs> and, you. you know, how important it, is it for you as a black woman to celebrate your heritage, to celebrate um, other uh, blacks or African-Americans in history that have influenced you? How important is that for you as an individual? It's very important to me. It made me feel like I am important at the school or in the society or community. Um, I can come to school and be myself. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's very important because you want to feel welcome wherever you go. Right. And so especially in your work field, you want to feel like you as important of value mm -hmm. as well as everyone else. That's right. And you know, and as moms and as black moms, yes. I say this to my kids and I said this to them this past weekend. <laughs> I said, you are black history. Mm -hmm. Every day that you live your life is an opportunity for you to not only learn life lessons, but also to be able to influence uh, things and, and your atmosphere just by being who you are. So it's important how you live your life. And so that's what I tell my kids. I tell them that all the time. I totally agree. Especially history don't never stop. Right. It's, it's still going. We make Today's history every today. day. I do agree. We really do. And, you know, and as far as you talking about how it's being acknowledged in the schools and you can see the posters and different things that kids are doing in schools that your kids did and that you remember as a young person doing. What has that, what do you think that does to help these young minds to grow? To me, it helped them to develop and to have an insight. You know, some of our kids are not fortunate to have parents or accesses to teach or help them, mm -hmm. you know, just something simple as writing their name. So with the school incorporated into the lesson plans and mm -hmm. the scheduling, I do look at it as a, a big value because, you know, kids, they learn off what we teach them. They right. experience so much within the school. So I'm great that it is incorporated into the schools. And you know, kids at this level, I mean, their minds are so impressionable. Mm -hmm. And sponges. so they like, absor they, <laughs> they are sponges. so be careful what you all are saying around those kids. <laughs> because no, they absorb it, they really do. So it's important for them to not only be in a positive environment at home, but also in the school system. Right. And to be valued, like for you as an adult woman, and then for these little kids to find value in that, for them to walk into this media center and go, whoa, I am enough. Yeah. You know, and so what that does is that helps with their self-esteem. Oh, yeah. It helps with them, uh, their self-confidence, mm -hmm. because these young people are our futures. Right. And so it's important what educators like yourself and parents out there, what you do and what you teach your children, because they absolutely are our future. I Anything agree. else you'd like to add, Miss Scott? No, ma'am, that would be up. Well, it's been a pleasure seeing you. Uh, oh, Samantha, likewise. Samantha and I are also, we're church sisters, <laughs> and she is on my drama team at church. And, you know, you and I have done a lot of different things, especially oh, during yes, Black History yes, Month, mm -hmm. of, of characters to where, you remember, like, who am I kind of yes. things that we're doing, and just really retelling history through dramatic arts. Right. And I myself, as a performer, I love that. Me too. I really enjoyed it. I get sometimes emotional with it. It can be a good thing or bad thing, but right. um, I really, like this month, not just this month, but every day, this something is very dear to my heart. Yes. I cherish it, but. And yeah. you know, that's part of our history. And the thing about our history is, not all of it is, you know, was pleasant, no. but it's a part of our history. And so it's important to know where we've come from and where our people have come from right. so that we, you know, will understand where we are right now and where we're going. That's right. That direction. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Miss Samantha Scott. It's nothing personal. It's just business. Hello? That's how some people do things. Right away. To us, everything we do is personal because anyone can answer the call. It's who shows up that matters most. That's the quality of your independent agent and the company that stands behind them. Ask Curry Maffet Insurance in Dublin if auto owners make sense for you. You want to acquire real world skills instead of student loan debt? OFTC gives you an opportunity to succeed in a safe and caring learning community with flexible classes on campus and online. In just two years, 
you could be ready for a career in a lucrative field that you love. Whatever lies ahead, education and skills training from OFTC can give you the confidence to succeed. Oconee Fall Line Technical College. Think differently about college. OFTC is an equal opportunity institution. We've got Melanie Deal with us here, the Teacher of the Year here at East Lawrence Primary. How are you, Mrs. Deal? I'm Steele? good. How are you? Doing very well. Now, listen, I mean, that's a great honor for you. Um, I'm excited about it. Apparently, you're doing something right. Sometimes. <laughs> and tell us now, tell us about what you teach and, and what it means for you. With, with us, what we're doing here for Black History Month is to make sure that we're identifying schools and things that they're doing with the kids and, and how they're incorporating the literacy and learning through the activities that they do. And so you share with us a little bit with you about what's going on in your classroom and what you've been working on with your kids and how important that is for them. Um, so I teach second grade math, mm -hmm. science, and social studies. I looped with my first grade class mm -hmm. since the pandemic happened. Um, I didn't feel like I got to finish with them. Yeah. And so um, I also tie in a lot of reading into science and social studies mm -hmm. and during our remediation time. Um, this month was Black History Month, and mm -hmm. so we wanted to incorporate literacy, and then we wanted to give the kids an opportunity to do some projects. And yeah. um, a lot of classes did that at home, and then my class did it in groups yeah. in our room. Um, we have two teachers, Dawn and Caitlin, who are mm -hmm. wonderful, and they mainly plan for science and social studies. And so they've been doing this project for several years right. with their second grade group. Um, and it was my first time coming in to do it, so I kind of did a little research, and I mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that I did it correctly because I've right. seen – um, in some second grade groups on Facebook that there are ways to teach it and there are ways not to. Right. And so I did some research to make sure that I was doing it correctly. I um, mean, we did do ours in class, but we did a lot of literacy. We did a lot of books. We mm -hmm. did some research on the internet. We did read alouds every day on the different um, people that we were researching. And the project was mainly to focus on the Georgia standards for science right, and social right, studies, right. which was social studies, which was people that came from Georgia. Yes. But we incorporated some more as well. We didn't want it to just be about Georgia because mm -hmm. there are so many African Americans that are famous for a lot of things. And right. I wanted to touch base on all of those. So we did it in class. I set them up in groups, um, COVID right. correctly. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so we I kind of, we did a lot more conversations right, with this. Right. I mm -hmm. wanted to be able to talk about it a lot more than than just doing worksheets and that right. sort of thing. And so we had open-ended conversations. I wanted the kids to be able to realize that what we see right now is not the way it's always been. Mm -hmm. And so I don't mm -hmm. want us to take advantage of that. And so the kids were really um, surprised at the fact of how things were in the past. When we talked about Martin Luther King and how there was a lot of segregation, mm -hmm. they didn't understand that. You know, right. We had conversations where they were open and they said, so you mean I couldn't go to school with my friend over right. here? And I was like, right. no, you couldn't. We wouldn't be able to have one spend the night and go to mm -hmm. McDonald's and all eat at the same restaurant. And mm -hmm. so that was mind blowing for them. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it is. You know, you're talking about second graders, seven year olds. And, you know, I think even as an adult, some things to me are mind-blowing. Yes. It's like, what? Are you serious? Absolutely. And so as time goes on, our history is still making history. Yes. And so I appreciate you as an educator and as a, as a, a woman to uh, be able to help the young people uh, open it up for them to be able to be expressive and the history lessons that you're giving these young people in your classroom. Yes. When I was doing research to make sure that I did teach it correctly because... In our current time, there's a lot going on. Right. And I didn't want any of them to be embarrassed. I didn't want it to come across demeaning. Mm -hmm. And so when I was doing the research, it was it was very open and, and it kind of was forthcoming and eye-opening to me that we can't just say, this is how it was. And that's just the way it was. And mm -hmm. these people are celebrated because they helped us overcome this or because mm -hmm. they're famous for playing basketball. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. needed to talk about how all of the African-Americans were important yep. and how they all overcame things. Um, and so I didn't just bring it up and say, this is how it was right. and let's move on. It was, this is why it was. This is what we did about right. it. And even today there are still problems mm -hmm. and we still have to stand up for each other and love one another um, and, and help others, you know, that are in a situation like that. And what's lovely as I'm listening to you is it's like the openness that you have um, and how you're really what you're teaching these children and how you're teaching it and, and how you're saying you wanted to do it the right way. Right. I think that's beautiful. And what that does is that's planting seeds in these young people here. Yes. So that when they're able to get to that point where they're able to educate someone, yes. they'll remember Miss Melanie Deal. <laughs> 
They'll remember the lesson. I don't know about me. Oh, they'll remember you, honey. You're a, you're a part of history. <laughs> but, you know, I think that's very important. And, you know, we're talking about your age group with second graders. You know, one of the posters I saw was of Ruby Bridges. Yes. When And I'm supposed to be doing a storytelling about Ruby as Ruby Bridges. You know, 1960, mm -hmm. that little girl yes. going to that William France Elementary by herself, escorted by a federal agent, you know, so the U.S. Marshals. And so, wow. Yes. And that was, um, we did that in my class as one of our group posters. Um, and so when we researched her, I had the kids, I was like, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to visualize oh, wow. that you are Ruby Bridges and you're yeah. going into a school. Like imagine how she felt and how brave she must have been and how difficult that was for her and how life would be so different now if she hadn't have taken those steps and oh, been brave gosh. enough. And they, it, I mean, some of them were just in awe, you know, that they couldn't believe, you know, that she had to go to school and then that she had to sit in a classroom by herself by for herself. so long. Um, and so I just, I, I've tried to explain to them that you've got to put yourself in those shoes, feel mm -hmm. how they were feeling, think mm -hmm. about others and how they feel even today, and then imagine how much different our life would be if we didn't have those people who stood up for what was right. You're absolutely right. And one thing I read, and I actually heard her lecture, I was watching her lecture, talked about they had a little baby casket and they had a little black baby in it. And they were, as she walked by, they were saying that they were going to poison her and they were going to kill her. And she said that she stopped and she prayed for them. And you know, that's hard to that even hard. imagine myself. I wasn't, a, I wasn't even born when that took place, but it ha if it had not been for Ruby Bridges, we wouldn't be in here. Absolutely. And that's that's that part of history. That's that part of history of African American history that is American history. Yes. Because lives were changed, lives were transformed because of that little girl and her parents. Absolutely. Who, and, and that teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that went with her, just that her. That teacher. And that's what's so important. And I tried I told them, you know, we're celebrating it this month, but this is something we have to talk about every month. It can't just be February. Yeah. You know, this is forever, you know, an evolving topic that we're going to have to keep discussing. But I told them, and, and we talked about it, yeah. how would we feel if that was us in different situations? Right. What would we have done? If people were spitting at us and they were being ugly and they were saying rude comments, how would we have handled it? You know, and um, one of the things that we talked about was like Martin Luther King and how he was slapped at the library. Mm -hmm. Oh. And um, that was in one of our literacy mm -hmm. books. And mm -hmm. I said, what would you have done if you were in that library and, and you were the one, I think he accidentally stepped on her foot and she slapped him. Wow. And, and I was like, as a parent, I wouldn't have handled it the way his parents did. I wouldn't, as a child, what would you have done? You know, and they talked about oh, it. I Your first that. reaction would have been to be hateful, to yell, you yep. know, to snap back. But these people, they overcame and they killed them with kindness. And they um, use mm. speeches instead of violence. Wow. And so it, it was a lot and it was eye opening to me a lot of the things that I didn't know. So I think we're all always learning. I love that. Thank you so much. I mean, You're I'm welcome. taking it all in. <laughs> I mean, you know, I know I wouldn't have fared well. <laughs> you know, I, and that's what I, I said. Know it, I, wouldn't I wouldn't have, have I would not have done well. But I'm so thankful for the people that have come before us, the people every day like you, like you, who's making a difference in everyone's life. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Melanie Deal, everyone. Hey, I'm Kyle Farrar with A-Plus Flooring and Construction. We're standing in our new showroom that we're going to be opening Monday, February the 8th at 9 a.m. till 4. We're excited about what we have. We have a huge selection. Uh, we're also going to have a lot of great specials. We're going to do 10% off everything in the store for the month of February. We also have a lot of in-stock bargains. We're going to have sheet vinyls, 12 foot wide, 13 six, and 16 wide, all for 55 cents a square foot. We've got LVP glue downs that we're going to be offering for 99 cents a square foot, as well as LVP click that we're going to have for $1.59. So come out, shop with us, don't miss a bargain. There are many ways to rejuvenate at Tafara's in Dublin. In addition to our boutique and eyelash and eyebrow services, we offer nourishing and exfoliating facial cleanses for clear, hydrated, younger looking skin. Colon hydrotherapy. This is a large form of an enema method of removing waste and toxins from the body to boost energy and has been known to enhance your immune system while shedding pounds. 
red light therapy. Tafara offers this simple, safe alternative to liposuction. The LipoMelt treatment is 100% non-invasive and doesn't cause side effects or bruising. Clients have been known to see inches melt away often in just one session. Also ladies, be sure to come in and ask about our Yanni treatments. Tafara has many options available to help you look and feel amazing. Tafara is located in the Dublin Mall. All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, here at East Lawrence Primary, and you're getting ready to meet some amazing second graders who, one of their projects, they did trifold uh, boards about blacks, African Americans, and history, and I mean, this is gonna be wonderful because they're about to be our subject matter experts, and we've got our first student up. How are you? Good. Tell everybody who you are and how old you are. My name is Holden Clay and I'm seven years old. You are seven years old. Now listen, Holden Clay. Now listen, I want you to look into that camera and we're gonna start sharing a little bit about the person that you learned about. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right, Holden. Who did you learn about? I learned about Wyoming Atias. Wyoming Atias? I don't think I've ever heard of her. Please, can you tell us something about her? Um, she was born August 29th, 1945. Um, she won three Olympic gold medals. What? Was she a runner? Yes, ma'am. Can you run, Holden? Yes, ma'am. You think you're good enough for the Olympics like her? Yes, ma'am. Oh, gosh, man. Keep going. Keep talking to us. Yes, ma'am. And, um, she was raised on a dairy farm, and then, um, she won, um, five um, million dollars for Family Feud. Five thousand dollars? That's a little bit different, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so she won $5,000 from being on Family Feud in what, 1980 or something like that? Mm -hmm. All right, what else, what else is, where did she go to college? Where did she go to college? Um, she went to uh, Tennessee State University. Tennessee State University, that's right. And listen now, so she was raised on a, a dairy farm. She won Olympic gold medals, right? Yes, ma'am. Anything else you wanna share about her? Um that um she went to college at griffin ga so she's from she's from griffin georgia yeah do you know where griffin ga is um no ma'am mm -mm, mm -mm. you have to get on the interstate you know and then you have to get off the interstate yes ma'am mm -hmm. I, I went to college in barnesville so that's one one city over from griffin all right anything else you want to share about her um no ma'am <laughs> Was it interesting for you to kind of learn about someone that you'd never learned about? Yes, ma'am. Did she um, go through a lot of different things in order to, to become famous, in order to do what she did? Yes, ma'am. She did. And uh, do you think she's probably, if she was, she's probably a cool person to meet? Mm-hmm. Anything else? You're good, Holden? Yes, ma'am. Very good. So proud of you. All Thank right. You. This is Holden, everyone. All right, we've got another young second grader with us. How are you today? I'm good. Tell everybody who you are and how old you are. I'm Logan Jones, and I'm eight years old. Logan Jones, and you're eight years old. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, so too. So you, you all did a project, didn't you? Yeah. And who is it that you uh, studied about? Who'd you learn about? Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. Had you ever heard of her before? No, ma'am. You haven't. So listen, now, this is your opportunity to share with us some things about Miss Rosa Parks. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right, go for it. She was born on February 4th, 1913, and then she's the mother of the civil rights. The mother of civil rights. Why do you think they called her that? What happened? What did she do? Because she was riding on the bus, and she, um... A white man got on the bus, and um, she refused to get out her seat. Wow. Did she go to jail for that? Yes, ma'am. She did. And so because of what she experienced and what she went through, that led to a whole lot of other stuff, didn't it? Mm-hmm. And so can you imagine how she felt on that bus, and he's trying to tell her to move? To What do you think she felt? She felt like. She felt brave and the man. Felt. Yeah, yeah. She's like, I'm going to be brave today. And so because of Rosa Parks, who's now named, who, who was the mother of the civil rights movement, because of what she did, because of her bravery, 
that caused the boycott, and then I'm all other things that's changed, didn't it? Do you ever ride a school bus? Yeah. Do you see kids that don't look like you that ride your school bus? Yes, ma'am. So it's because of things that Rosa Parks and others went through that now, here we are today, you're able to ride a school bus with kids that don't look like you, right? Yes, ma'am. Very good. Anything else you want to share? Yes, ma'am. What do you want to say? And she died on October 24th, um, mm -hmm. um, 2005. 2005. Very good. Thank you for sharing with us. We've got another second grader here that's going to share with us. We've got Tucker Harrell. How are you, Tucker? Good. Good to see you. Are you nervous at all, or are you pretty cool today? Um, cool. You're cool. Very good. Now, you all studied uh, different uh, blacks, African Americans in, in, in your classes, and you did the board. Who was your person? Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Had you already heard of him before? No. no. So did you learn some interesting facts about him? Yes. Do you care to share those with us? All right, talk to us, Tucker. He was born on September 13th, 1969, New Orleans, Louisiana. New Orleans? Have you ever been to New Orleans? No. You know they call it New Orleans. You didn't know that? Mm-mm, mm-mm. What else about Tyler? He was an actor, director, producer, screen, and a screenwriter. What? All of that? Coming from New Orleans? Now, um, do you know any of the movies or any kind of things that he's done? Any characters that he plays? Oh, Lord, you're going to have to go online and, and listen. So he plays one character called Medea. Did you know that? You did. Mm -hmm. And um, I also, you, you know, he's a very tall guy. Did you know how tall he was? You know how tall he is? 6'5". And I'm 5'2". How tall are you? You don't even know, do you? Okay. What other interesting facts about Tyler Perry you'd like to share? Um, he was the first African African American to create his own studio. And what's the name of his studio? Tyler Perry Studios. You know, we probably need to go visit that sometime, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Did he finish high school? No. He didn't finish high school. What did he do? He got his GED. Got his GED. And, and he's a writer too, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else you want to share about him? Yes. What's that? He was a, an abused child. Wow. So he endured abuse as a child to become a billionaire. That's amazing, isn't it? So what does that, what do you, what do you get from that? So what have you learned from what you've learned about Tyler Perry? No matter what you experience in life, you can overcome it, right? Mm -hmm. And to be successful. Very good. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing with us today. All right. I'm Don Carswell of Dublin Chevrolet. The new year means new savings on your favorite Chevy. Dublin Chevrolet saves you up to 7000 off MSRP on this Silverado Crew Cab. And remember, Don sells cars well only at Dublin Chevrolet. The way the world is today. Go. Go, go, go. Things just seem so out of control. That's why the things we can control are so important. That's why we're members of our electric co-op. The whole reason the co-op exists is to bring us the electricity we need. So they look out for us. They invest in the best technology you can get just to keep the power on. Not because they have to. They actually do it because it's the right thing to do. This has really been an interesting day, just hearing the perspectives of the young uh, second graders here and them sharing about what they learned about very influential people in our history. We've got the lovely, lovely, lovely Miss Zoe Pageant with us. Hi, Zoe. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Now, Zoe, you and I have done this before, right? You're kind of like a veteran in front of this television camera, aren't you? <laughs> mm -hmm. So I guess you just have to show them how it's done, right? All right, Zoe, who was your person that you uh, done, did research on? Gladys Knight. Oh, Lord. You mean Gladys Knight and the Pips? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, what do you want to share about Gladys Knight? She was born May 28, 1944. She was born in Atlanta, Georgia. Wait a minute. So she's a Georgia peach like you and me? Mm-hmm. I love her more already. 
Keep going, Zoe. <laughs> she won the TV talent competition. She had three kids. So she's a mama. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's a mama, just like your mama's a mama. <laughs> right? <laughs> she graduated. She graduated from Shaw University. Wow. She married w William McDowell. Wait a minute, you know her husband? <laughs> At the age of 57. Okay, so that's her. She's been married a few times, so that's her last <laughs> one, right? That's it for her? She's not married anybody else? Um, I think she's married somebody else. Oh, okay, Lord. Keep going, Zoe. She won, um... She's won a lot of awards, hasn't she? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does she have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? Mm -hmm. She does, she does. And um, she used to have this restaurant in Atlanta. Did you know that? No. Mm -hmm. It's a chicken and waffles joint. You didn't know that? Mm -mm. I still got a gift card to go there, Zoe, but they've had to close it down. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And you know, what about the songs that she sang? She's famous for singing, honey. Her famous hit was The Midnight Train to Georgia. Ooh! Zoe, that's my jam. Don't you like that song? Mm -hmm. I, if we had more time, you and I would probably be able to like practice and sing it, don't you think? Mm -hmm. But we won't, we'll leave it alone for now. <laughs> what other interesting facts you want to share about Miss Gladys Knight? I think that's all. That's all you want to share? And, uh, and she's overcome uh, cancer. She was sick with cancer, and so she's still alive. She's still doing great things, and I tell you, she has left an impact in our lives. She's like the Empress of Soul or something like that, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. I got to see her in Atlanta one time. She was in a play, it was great. Did you get to meet her? I would have liked to, but I know I probably would have been real kind of crazy when I met her, you know <laughs> what I mean? Just too excited. Was this fun for you to learn about Miss Gladys Knight? Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Zoe. You're welcome. All right, this is Zoe Pageant, everyone, talking about Gladys Knight. All right, we've got Miss Zoe Tibbetts with us today. Hi, Zoe. Hi. How are you? I'm good. All right, now, Zoe, is this your first time being interviewed by me? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not nervous or anything, are you? Not much. Not much. Well, you're playing it off very well, Zoe. All right, now, Zoe, you all did a project in, in class. What did you, uh, who did you learn about? Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Did you already know Ray Charles? Mm-hmm. What? You already knew about him. All right, now listen, we're all ears. We want to listen to you, Zoe. Tell us all about Mr. Ray Charles. Well, he won 17 Grammy Awards and his 37 uh, nominations. Wait a minute. 17 Grammys. Doing what? Um. What did he do? He played music. Well, he was blind. When he was um, a little boy, he suffered from an eye disease, and by the time he was seven, he was totally blind. Why, by the time he was your age? Can you imagine that? Mm -mm. That would be so difficult, wouldn't it? And he overcame that, didn't he? Yep. He did. And so, wait a minute. He, he was a musician, mm -hmm. and he was a what? Um, a music player. And he sang. He was a singer. Mm -hmm. Do you know any... Okay, tell us some more things about Mr. Ray Charles. Well, he... <sighs> Where did he grow up? Where was he born? He, he was born in Alabama. Albany. Albany, Georgia. Albany, Georgia. Or Albany or, Al and, or Albany or something like that. People pronounce it And he was the father of soul music. Wait a minute. The father of soul music. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that meant he was not only a great musician and singer, he was the father of them, right? Mm hmm All right. Anything else you want to tell us about Mr. Ray Charles? And he was the father of soul music. He he was he died June sixteenth, two thousand and four. Oh my gosh! Do you know any of his songs? Mm mm, I don't. Oh, let me tell you, he was amazing. He really was. And so you know, people still listen to his music today. They still uh, you know. People sing his music and they play his music. That's why he's the father of soul. Mm -hmm. Do you know who the godfather of soul is? Mm -mm. That would be James Brown. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with us. You did a great job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is Zoe Tibbetts, everyone.
All right, I tell you, I hope that you all are getting a very good history lesson uh, today from these fantastic second graders. We've got this little lovely pumpkin over here in orange. How are you? Good. Tell everybody who you are and how old you are. I'm Addison Brooks, and I am eight years old. Addison, you're eight years old. Good to see you. Have you and I talked before, Addison? Yes, mm -hmm. a lot. I'm friends with your mama, Anna. <laughs> all right, Addison. We went to a parade together. Yes, we did. We did. We worked together. All right, Addison, now listen. Who is the person that you learned about? Martin Luther King, Jr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Had you already heard about him? <laughs> all right, so now you've got even more facts that you can share with us, right? All right, look into that camera and tell us about Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Um, he was born January 15th, 1929. Mm, wow. He died April 9th, 1969. So he was born and then he died before you and I were even born, has it? But he has left a legacy behind. Tell us some things about him that happened during those years. Um, when he was, um, when, um, he was little, mm -hmm. um, he was playing with a little boy. He had a white friend and mm -hmm. his dad, the, the white boy, his dad told him that he couldn't play with him because he was um, black mm -hmm. and um, they couldn't be best friends anymore. Oh my gosh, Addison, what do you think about that? Sad. It's sad, isn't it? You've got a lot of friends, don't you? I would be mad if, not, if that happened to me. And I Natalie. know you would because you're so friendly. You're so friendly. And so he experienced that as a young person. And you, did you, do you know that he came to Dublin to speak? Mm -hmm. Do you know how old he was? You don't know? Guess how old he was. He was like 14. Ooh. Yes, at first AB Church, that's where he gave his oratorical speech. That's why you see the downtown, you see that monument, that painting. That's why it's up there of him. What else do you want to tell us about Martin Luther King? Um, he skipped two grades, and when he was in college, he was only 15. Wait a cotton picking minute. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me he was so smart that he went to college at 15 years old? Mm. Do you think you'll be able to do that? No. <laughs> so he was very smart, and he was very determined, and he went through a lot of different things. And do you remember his famous speech, one of his famous speeches? What? I have a dream. I have a dream. You know, he dreamed that one day little girls like me and, and little girls like you would be able to, to play. Come together. Come together. And look what we're doing, aren't we? So we, you and I are living the dream, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to share about Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr.? Um, he, he was, he started the bus boycott. The Yes, he did, the, boy, the bus boycott. So they marched. Did he believe in violence or did he believe in non, no violence? Uh, I don't know. Nonviolence, yes, nonviolence. And so he has left an impact in not just my life, but your life too, hasn't he? All right, thank you so much for sharing with us. You're I love welcome. you, little pumpkin. <laughs> this has been really a great day for me, and I tell you, being able to sit alongside uh, these young people here has been pretty outstanding, and I found myself quite blessed. Hey, darling, how are you? Good. All right, here we go now. The camera's on. Are you ready? All right, tell us who you are. Kalexiana. Kalexiana? All right, Kalexiana. Now, Kalexiana, who did you study about in class? Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker. Had you ever heard of Herschel Walker? No. All right, tell us about Herschel Walker. You ready? All right, go for it. What can you tell us about Herschel Walker? Um, he was born March the 3rd, 1962. 1962. Where was he born? In University of Georgia. Mm -mm, he was born down in Rice. I don't know. <laughs> down the road from us. <laughs> down the road, honey. He was born in Wrightsville. Where did he go to college? How about that? University of Georgia. The University of Georgia. Now he was what kind of what was he what did he do for what did he do? What's he known for? Um football. Football. So he played football. Very good. What else you want to tell us about uh, Herschel Walker? Herschel Walker 
Herschel Walker is a professional football player. He is still alive, and he has one child named uh, Christian Walker. That's right, and he was actually, he was an All-American, wasn't he? Did you know that? He was an All-American. <laughs> what else do you want to share about Herschel Walker? That the mother of Herschel Walker is Christine Walker. Yes, Christine Walker and from down in Wrightsville, right? Anything else you want to share about Herschel? In U.S. history, he was the first true freshman. The first true freshman in U.S. history. Anything else? No. That's about it. Well, Herschel Walker, you know, um, my, my siblings and all, they remember him in high school and playing uh, against him, actually, in high school. And so it's nice to see someone, what we call a homeboy, around from coming from here in this area and to really become a professional in the field of sports. And then, of course, he's doing a lot of other things with his foundation and everything, so he's still doing great things. All right? Thank you, little mama. Jackson's Income Tax Service is ready to serve you. Jackson's Income Tax Service is open year-round, so don't delay. Come in today and get your taxes done and out of the way. Jackson's Income Tax Service has always stayed abreast of current and future tax laws. Email Jackson's Income Tax Service, call 272-8681, or visit us at 610 North Church Street in Dublin. Jackson's Income Tax Service is following CDC guidelines, practicing social distancing, you may drop off, email, or mail in your information for professional tax return services. So come to Jackson's Income Tax Service. Where experience makes the difference. The City of Dublin Natural Gas provides the most cost-efficient source of energy available today. So for your home, choose the most natural resource. Safe, clean, efficient. All new subdivisions around the Dublin area have natural gas available. Start reducing your energy bills today with Dublin City Natural Gas Department. Natural gas, the smart choice. Call 277-5048 today and let us help you start saving today. We've got another little cutie patootie with us. Hi, Jalen. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Is it good to see me? Okay. Now, you know what we're doing. I mean, you have really, you know, you've been studying about uh, African Americans or blacks in history, right? Has it been fun for you? Who did you learn about? Eric Walden. Girl, stop. Did you already know Eric Walden? No. No? I know his mama. I know his brother, his sisters. Yes. Are you ready to tell us about Eric Walden? Go for it. He was born August the 25th. Mm-hmm. August the 25th. What else about him? He went to college. Wait a minute. Before he went to college, he went to school. Where did he go to school at? Dublin High School. Dublin High School. So where is he from? George, Dublin, Georgia. That's right. He was born and raised here. He went to school in Dublin. My sister, Pam Ingram, taught him. She was his school teacher. What else about Eric? He went to college. Um, where did he go to college? Tennessee University. Middle Tennessee State. Yes, he did. Great football player. What else about him? He played for the um, Dallas Cowboys in 2008. That's right. He got drafted to the Dallas Cowboys. Can you believe that? Coming from Dublin, huh? That's quite impressive. Anything else you want to share with us about Eric Walden? He also played for the Green Bay Packers. Yes, he did. Do you remember the last team he played for? Seattle? Seattle Seahawks? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else do you want to say about Eric Walden? That's all. Well, let me just say this. So for him, you know, when you're talking about people in history that have impacted our lives, when you hear that somebody's from Dublin, you're like, what? Right? And here it is, Eric Walden, who definitely made a name for himself. He uh, actually would, he hosts camps here every year for, uh, for young people that want to play football, that are football players. His family, they give away turkeys for Thanksgiving. Do you know that? 
Mm -hmm. So he's still be, he's done a lot of great things uh, for the community. He's giving back. And so we're just proud. I'm just so excited and proud that you even did the story on Eric Bolton. <laughs> it's cool that he's from Dublin, isn't it? All right. Anything else you want to share with everybody out there? He was number 93. Number 93. That's right. I love it. Is there anything else? Yeah, ma'am. You did a great job. Proud of you. Thank you. I hope you get to meet Eric Walden one day. No, right? <laughs> All right, we've got two more students left, and we've got the lovely Miss Kristen James with us. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. You look adorable. Thanks. Mm hmm You're welcome. Who did you learn about? Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Had you ever heard of him before? What did you already know about him? That he plays Medea's Boo, and he got the... Bet Icon Award. What? All right. So share with us some more about Tyler Perry. He was born Emmett Jr. But at eight, at 16, he changed his name to Tyler Perry. Oh, did he? You're not thinking about changing your name, are you? Mm-mm. Keep it as it is. All right. What else? And he got his GED. Did he? He got his GED. Okay. What else? And he was born in um are you reading a cue card woman <laughs> in new orleans right he was born in new orleans louisiana that's right and you know so he got his ged and what else did he do what else has he done um he is an actor mm -hmm. director screenwriter mm-hmm have you ever seen him play medea is he funny as medea He's hilarious. And so he also, what else do you want to say about him? Um, he is my favorite person in the whole wide world. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? So would you, you think you'd want to meet him one day? And I know he got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, too. He, in, yeah. He did? Mm-hmm. What else do you want to share about him? Um, um, Tyler Perry... Mm. Well, how about has this? one son named Amen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with Jaquela Bikaley. Yeah, is that right? Look at that. <laughs> they know all about his baby mama and everything. Listen, y'all are impressing us here. You are impressing us. Anything else you learned about Tyler Perry? Um, he, his friend is Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey. I think that's my friend too. <laughs> And so he's done a lot of great things with movies and television, and he does a lot to give back to others too, doesn't he? All right, and so, and where is his studio located? Um, in Georgia. Atlanta. What's the name of it? Um, Tyler Perry studi Studio. That is correct. Anything else you want to add? Mm. Mm hmm. That's about it, isn't it? Well, Tyler Perry, thank you for the indention that you are making uh, in, in our lives, and we just appreciate the work that you're doing and how you're giving back. Thank you, darling, for sharing about Tyler Perry, your favorite person in the whole wide world. All right, we've got our last student for the day. How are you? Good. What's your name? Kaimani Walker. Kaimani. Now, listen, Kaimani, now, you're the last one. Are we saving the best for last? Yes. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much so. And so you've been hearing your other other uh, young people talk about the people that they studied, right? Yes. You've got somebody that you learned some stuff about, haven't you? Yes, ma'am. What's their name? Helena Maud Brown Cobb. Helena Maud Brown Cobb. Who is that? Tell us about her. Um, she was a principal and a teacher. Mm-hmm. She she was born on January. 2014. No, not 2014. She was born in 1869. That's a little bit different, right? All right, Kamani, you got this. She was born here in Georgia. She was an educator, a writer. She was a principal, too? Mm -hmm. Wow, what else can you tell us about her? She was married. She didn't have any kids. Mm -hmm. um, she was 30 years old. 30 years old. Okay. Mm. What made her, why did you want to do research on her? Why did you learn about her? The, the reason why I researched her, because she was a principal and a teacher, and that's cool. 
Yeah, that's his. Now, would you think you want to be a teacher or a principal? I want to be a principal. You want to be a principal. So this is someone that you could admire for what she did, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Okay. And she died in what year? What year did she die? She died... Was it like 1922 or something like that? I guess so. And so can you imagine during those times her being an educated black woman and then becoming a principal? Yeah. Do you think that she experienced some very tough times? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But she was able to overcome them, right? And so here it is, you. You want to be a principal. Why do you want to be a principal one day? So I can get money and buy stuff. Okay, now wait a minute. You want to get money and buy stuff. But don't you want to help other young people to learn? Mm-hmm. Right, there it is. And that money and buying stuff, that can come with it too, though, right? You've got your dad here in the audience with you today, don't you? He's one of my two guests, my two audience members. How do you feel being able to talk about Miss um, Cobb on television? How does that feel for you? Cool. It's cool, isn't it? And do you know other uh, blacks in history that you all have learned, that you've learned something about? Who else do you know about? Tyler Perry. Mm hmm. Um, Ray Charles. Yes. Those are two very significant men that really helped change the face of, of acting and of, in music, right? Mm hmm. Very good. Any last words? How important is it for you that you think that all kids should learn about African Americans from our history? How important is that? Really important. Really important. So, very good. We're done, right? You did a good job. Mm -hmm. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been such a great day here at East Orange Primary. Their Black History, uh, the show here, just talking about what they're doing concerning literacy and learning and the things that are taking place in the classrooms. And for example, these second grade classrooms where they're learning about African Americans in history and how they have not just changed uh, the face of our history and, and things that we're doing now in the future, but they have transformed them. And so these young people here have the opportunity themselves to make history every single day. Thank you all so much for watching. We're Team Lawrence.